Hello and welcome back to another Kojak Studios tutorial series video. What we're going to cover off on today is looking at how you create the health splash icons uh, that pop out of players or objects as you uh, take damage or whatever sort of number, numbering system you want to use. So useful for uh, creating graphics and a bit more uh, feedback for the players uh, if they uh, lose a little bit of health. So not including the health system, we'll jump right in. So what we want to do is create a little platformer uh, just so we can test our game. So all I'm doing here is just creating a platform and this will just allow my object to move across on. Get an obstacle. I'll make my player as usual. Call him player. And give him platform movement. Alright, now I'm just going to go into my code editor and just need to double check that when he's overlapping a backdrop, his movement stops. Right, so this just creates our platform, as you can see. Now I might just make his jump a little bit bigger. Okay. Now what we want to do is go ahead and create the uh, two main objects of the game, one being the obstacle or the spike that the uh, player is going to run into uh, and take damage, and then the icon that's going to appear uh, to give feedback to the player that damage has occurred. So we'll go ahead and put an active object in, and this is going to form our spike. So all I'm doing is just creating a simple looking icon. This can be whatever you want. If you've got a pre-existing graphic, go ahead and use that. Uh, it's just nondescript, so adding some very poor looking spikes. No drums. Maybe a colour on those. Okay, and that will call that spike. Alright, here we go. down there. Now what we need to create is the actual icon that's going to appear in active. Now what this is going to be is the health uh, degradation icon uh, that's going to pop out. So I'm just going to make this uh, probably 80 by 80. You can make this whatever you want. Uh, it's not set. And I'm just going to use text for this. And impact's pretty good. Probably size 36 for my one. And I'm going to make it red so the player knows. And I'm going to say minus 10 health. All right. So I've got minus 10 health there. And this is just going to be uh, health icon. And what I need to set is untick, create at start, because we only want to spawn this when the player actually runs into a spike. And make sure destroy object if too far from frame uh, is ticked. That way, as it uh, jumps out and you'll see what occurs, uh, it falls off the frame and then um, cleans itself up. So that way we don't have too many active objects floating around and uh, taking up memory. So if we go into the object, staying on there, and what we want to change this one to is correction. I need to add a physics engine. The reason is we're going to put the bouncing ball physics movement uh, as part of that icon to, to give it the effect nice and simply. Uh, but for that, we need the physics engine. So go ahead and add that into your game. Uh, nothing more to be done there. Click back on your, your icon. Go down to the movement and change it to physics bouncing ball movement. The one thing we want to do is go into the initial direction. So this is going to set uh, which way the bouncing ball physics will uh, send the object uh, when it first falls. So undo all those. And we just want it to go up. So that way it goes up and falls down uh, in a random direction of some description. You can just have it always going in the same, but a little bit of randomness uh, is good. Making sure gravity scale is there, that way it does actually drop back down. And turn off auto rotation, you'll see why we just don't want the minus 10 to be spilling around. Now the minus 10, I've chosen that, it's just indicating that when the player runs into the spike, he's going to lose 10 health. Now, like I said, I haven't included an actual health system here, we'll cover that off in another tutorial. Okay, so we're all set. Uh, 
if we run this now, you'll see nothing happens. Player can jump over the spike uh, and we're all set. So let's go to the event editor. Uh, and what we want to say is if the player collides with another object, being the spike, we're going to, we're going to create this uh, help icon and make it relative to the player itself. So what that's saying is when the player collides with the spike, it's going to create that icon, which we put the bouncing ball physics as part of, so that sits separate from it, uh, and it's going to go ahead and do its thing. So what you'll see now, go ahead and run that. As you can see, it's starting to uh, spawn the icon. So he runs into it, jumps over it, runs into the spike, loses 10 now. In another tutorial, we'll cover up on how that actually uh, ties into the health system itself. So we can tidy that up if we want. We can go back into here. Uh, we can maybe cut down on the initial direction. Maybe we only want to go uh, in those three directions. And maybe we want the initial speed to be a little bit faster. Right, fast. And, and let's see what happens now. Oh, a little bit too fast. Okay, so why don't we muck around and try a different variable. Okay, so it's starting to look a little bit better. He runs into it and the help icon comes out. Simple as that. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, please feel free to send us, um, send, send us an email or touch base on YouTube, uh, Twitter at CodeJack Studios or Facebook also at CodeJack Studios. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, stay tuned for more to come in the future and we'll catch you soon.